Mosley's law is an empirical law concerning the characteristic X-rays that are emitted by atoms. The law was discovered and published by the English physicist Henry Mosley in 1913. It is historically important in quantitatively justifying the conception of the nuclear model of the atom, with all, or nearly all, positive charges of the atom located in the nucleus, and associated on an integer basis with atomic number. Until Mosley's work, atomic number, was merely an element's place in the periodic table, and was not known to be associated with any measurable physical quantity. Mosley was able to show that the frequencies of certain characteristic X-rays emitted from chemical elements are proportional to the square of a number which was close to the element's atomic number, a finding which supported van den Broek and Bohr's model of the atom in which the atomic Number is the same as the number of positive charges in the nucleus of the atom. History Following conversations in 1913 with Niels Bohr, a fellow worker in Ernest Rutherford's Cavendish Laboratory, Mosley had become interested in the Bohr model of the atom, in which the spectra of light emitted by atoms is proportional to the square of Z, the charge on their nucleus. Bohr's formula had worked well to give the previously known Rydberg formula for the hydrogen atom, but it was not known then if it would also give spectra for other elements with high Z numbers, or even precisely what the Z numbers for heavier elements were. In particular, only two years earlier, Rutherford in 1911 had postulated that Z for gold atoms might be about half of its atomic weight. And only shortly afterward, Antonius van den Broek had made the bold suggestion that Z was not half of the atomic weight for elements, but instead was exactly equal to the element's atomic number, or place in the periodic table. This position in the table was not known to have any physical significance up to that time, except as a way to order elements in a particular sequence so that their chemical properties would match up. The ordering of atoms in the periodic table did tend to be according to atomic weights, but there were a few famous, reversed, cases where the periodic table demanded that an element with a higher atomic weight nevertheless be placed at a lower position, before an element like nickel, which the table demanded take the higher position at Z equals 28. Mosley inquired if Bohr thought that the electromagnetic emission spectra of cobalt and nickel would follow their ordering by weight, or by their periodic table position, and Bohr said it would certainly be by Z. Mosley's reply was we shall see, since the spectral emissions for high Z elements would be in the soft X-ray range. Mosley was required to use vacuum tube techniques to measure them, using X-ray diffraction techniques in 1913-1914. Mosley found that the most intense short wavelength line in the X-ray spectrum of a particular element was indeed related to the element's periodic table atomic number. This line was known as the K-alpha line. Following Bohr's lead, Mosley found that this relationship could be expressed by a simple formula, later called Mosley's law, where, is the frequency of the main or K-X-ray emission line and are constants that depend on the type of line for example, the values for and are the same for all lines, so the formula can be rewritten thus. Mosley himself chose to show this without Pache, which instead was given by Mosley as a pure constant number in the standard Rydberg style, as simply three quarters of the fundamental Rydberg frequency for K-alpha lines, and for L-alpha lines according to the Rydberg formula, where must be one quarter minus one ninth equals five thirty-sixths times the Rydberg frequency. This also was the way Mosley chose to write it. Mosley's was given as a general empiric constant to fit either K-alpha or L-alpha transition lines. Mosley found the entire term was two for E-L-alpha transitions, and again his fit to data was good. 
but not as close as for K-alpha lines where the value of was found to be 1. Thus, Mosley's two given formulae for K-alpha and L-alpha lines, in his original semi rydberg style notion, are HZHZ derivation and justification from the Bohr model of the Rutherford nuclear atom. Mosley derived his formula empirically by plotting the square root of X-ray frequencies against a line representing atomic number. However, it was almost immediately noted that his formula could be explained in terms of the newly postulated 1913 Bohr model of the atom. If certain reasonable extra assumptions about atomic structure in other elements were made, However, at the time Mosley derived his laws, neither he nor Bohr could account for their form. The 19th century empirically derived Rydberg formula for spectroscopists is explained in the Bohr model as describing the transitions or quantum jumps between one energy level and another in a hydrogen atom. When the electron moves from one energy level to another, a photon is given off. Using the derived formula for the different energy levels of hydrogen, one may determine the energy or frequencies of light that a hydrogen atom can emit. The energy of photons that a hydrogen atom can emit in the Bohr derivation of the Rydberg formula is given by the difference of any two hydrogen energy levels in which equals mass of an electron equals charge of an electron equals quantum number of final energy level equals quantum number of initial energy level it is assumed that the final energy level is less than the initial energy level. For hydrogen, the quantity because Z is equal to 1, that is, the hydrogen nucleus contains a single charge. However, for hydrogenic atoms, Bohr realized from his derivation that an extra quantity would need to be added to the conventional in order to account for the extra pull on the electron, and thus the extra energy between levels, as a result of the increased nuclear charge. In 1914 it was realized that Mosley's formula could be adapted from Bohr's, if two assumptions were made. The first was that the electron responsible for the brightest spectral line which Mosley was investigating from each element results from a transition by a single electron between the K and L shells of the atom, with energy quantum numbers corresponding to 1 and 2. The second was that the Z in Bohr's formula, though still squared, required diminishment by 1 to calculate K alpha. This effect arises because the initial and final states of the atom have different amounts of electron-electron repulsion. A widespread oversimplification is the idea that the effective charge of the nucleus decreases by one when it is being screened by an unpaired electron. In any case, Bohr's formula for Mosley's K-alpha X-ray transitions became, or, collection of the constants in this formula into a single constant gives a frequency equivalent to about three quarters of the 13.6 electron volts ionization energy, with the final value of 2.47 times 1015 Hz in good agreement with Mosley's empirically derived value of 2.48 times 1015 Hz. This fundamental frequency is the same as that of the hydrogen lime and alpha line. Because the 1s to 2p transition in hydrogen is responsible for both lime and alpha line in hydrogen, and also the k alpha lines in X-ray spectroscopy for elements beyond hydrogen, which are described by Mosley's law. Mosley was fully aware that his fundamental frequency was lime and alpha. The fundamental Rydberg frequency resulting from two fundamental atomic energies, and for this reason differing by the Rydberg Bohr factor of exactly three quarters. However, the necessity of reduction of Z by a number close to 1 for these K alpha lines in heavier elements was derived completely empirically by Mosley and was not discussed by his papers in theoretical terms, since the concept of atomic shells with paired electrons was not well established in 1913, and in particular the Schrödinger atomic orbitals, including the 1s orbital with only two electrons would not be formally introduced and completely understood until 1926. 
At the time Mosley was puzzling over his Z-1 term with Bohr. Bohr thought that the inner shell of electrons in elements might contain at least four and often six electrons. Mosley for a time considered that this K-lines resulted from a simultaneous transmission of four electrons at once from the L to K shells of atoms, but did not commit himself on this point in his papers. As regards Mosley's L-alpha transitions, the modern view associates electron shells with principal quantum numbers n, with each shell containing two n, two electrons, giving the n equals one shell of atoms two electrons, and the n equals two shell eight electrons. The empirical value of 7.4 for Mosley's is thus associated with n equals two to three, then called L-alpha transitions and occurring from the m to l shells in Bohr's later notation. This value of 7.4 is now known to represent an electron screening effect for a fraction of the total of 10 electrons contained in what we now know to be the n equals 1 and 2 shells historical importance. See the biographical article on Henry Moseley for more. Moseley's formula, by Bohr's later account, not only established atomic number as a measurable experimental quantity, but gave it a physical meaning as the positive charge on the atomic nucleus. Because of Moseley's X-ray work, elements could be ordered in the periodic system in order of atomic number rather than atomic weight. This reversed the ordering of nickel and cobalt. This in turn was able to produce quantitative predictions for spectral lines in keeping with the Bohr-Rutherford semi-quantum model of the atom, which assumed that all positive charge was concentrated at the center of the atom, and that all spectral lines result from changes in total energy of electrons circling it as they move from one permitted level of angular momentum and energy to another. The fact that Bohr's model of the energies in the atom could be made to calculate X-ray spectral lines from aluminum to gold in the periodic table, and that these depended reliably and quantitatively on atomic number, did a great deal for the acceptance of the Rutherford, Van den Broek, Bohr view of the structure of the atom, when later quantum theory essentially also recovered Bohr's formula for energy of spectral lines. Mosley's law became incorporated into the full quantum mechanical view of the atom, including the role of the single 1s electron which remains in the K shell of all atoms after another K electron is ejected. According to the Schrödinger equation prediction, an elaborate discussion criticizing Mosley's analysis of screening can be found in a paper by Whitaker.